Hey guys, and welcome to the absolute madness of Total War Warhammer 2 once again, as we have Capt Tellus on the left-hand side, bringing the force of the Tomb Kings up against the Black Fawn and the High Elf Legions. Should be a good fun game, these guys are very evenly matched. It's always a bit of a joy when you see Tellus versus the Fawn. So let's pop this into slow motion and quickly go through the builds. I've been seeing a lot of love recently for the Tomb King forces. For quite some time, people were saying they're garbage, they're not a good faction, but I've seen many a top tier player at the moment bringing them with deadly effectiveness as well. But that's mainly due down to the power of skeleton chariots as well, and people starting to utilize them a little bit more in their Tomb King forces. So we do indeed have double chariot down here on the left hand side, who can cover for one of the main weaknesses for the Tomb Kings, which of course is their lack of solid infantry. The skeleton chariots tend to be able to grind down the enemy rather effectively. So we have skeleton spearmen and skeleton warriors dotted all the way along the front line and some in the back as well. Looks like spearmen rolling dirty alongside some of the sneaky stakes, the stalkers themselves, coming forward with their anti-large. Always good to have these guys in the back. A stalked anti-large unit is one of the best backline protectors in the entire game. It's very powerful. And their main job today is to be basically babysitters. For the two, you shop two great bows here who will bring pain from afar. Looks like we have even more chariots on the far side, so four chariots all round, and a lovely little hero core you'll see quite often is a Tomb Prince whose main job is to bodyguard Ark and the Black, who will Spirit Leech spam you to death. He is, of course, bringing Spirit Leech as well as Fate of Buna. And the reason Spirit Leech is even better with Ark and the Black is because of the Staff and the Gash, which basically means every 30 seconds you're going to be popping off Spirit Leeches left, right, and center. It is very, very scary stuff. For the forces of the High Elves, though, we have Rangers dotted all the way along the battle line, looking pretty damn awesome as always with their dual-wielding blades, backed up by some of the white lines as well. And white lines, uh, actually a solid-ish troop. I know a lot of people kind of bashed on them for quite a while as well, but decent AP should better cleave their way through the chariots if they are in sustained combat for a long period of time. Up in the sky, we have double Flames Fire Phoenixes, the better of the two Phoenixes, though I would argue the slightly less cool, all pun intended. But the fact that they can be reborn into the world to once again bring fire to the enemy is always a good sign. Also, they do drop gigantic fire poos, which is quite cool. With an Archmage down here, coming in with the Arcane Conduit, as well as Book of Hoef, and a Fireball. And we have a second spellcaster today, the Lawmaster of Hoef, a unit which I see basically never, ever being brought. I love this little bubble of magic he has around him for protection. And the Lawmaster of Hoef, why do we not see him as often as you would think? I mean, he has a really good set of spells all around. He can bring Earth Blood, and as you can see, Spirit Leech, as well as Shem's Burning Gaze. He's a relatively decent duelist and anti-infantry. The main problem, I think with the Lawmaster of Hoeth is when you have these combat hybrid casters, they tend to be lords who are very powerful. And the Lawmaster, if you want to pay for himself, you do kind of want to get him in combat as well. But of course, being uh, the fact you can get Burning Head and Shem's Burning Gaze in one go is very powerful. You can see them trying to snipe out the Tomb Prince with a Spirit Leech. Oh my god, that is disgusting. Fireball, Shem's Burning Gaze and Spirit Leech combo takes the Tomb Prince down to about half HP, or at least lost a third of his health there. The biggest problem I have, though, with the Lawmaster of Hoeth is going to be his lack of mobility. We'll have to see how if that does uh, pay into today's battle. Skeleton Chariots on this flank are being currently gooned by the Flames Fire Phoenixes, who are doing a really good job, and I really like the uh, big kind of Phoenixes or units, which are kind of monstrous infantry, to counter Chariots. They certainly do a fantastic job there. The poor Archmage being obliterated by the Shopti from Range Haver. On the far side, there is nothing to pin in these Chariots, and they're going to be having an absolute whale of a time pushing their way through ranges and supporting the Skeleton Warriors, who otherwise would be getting absolutely dumpstered in this fight. But you can see HP-wise, they're actually relatively even, and that is because these chariots are bouncing between combats, trying to support the Tomb Kings where possible. It looks like the Archmage is just about clinging on to life at the moment. You Shopti's struggling to line up shots as she is hiding amongst the Skeleton Warriors and rangers there. Though Flame Sire Phoenix is very healthy. We actually also have the Fireborn, who I didn't go over earlier. Just waiting in the wings right now, chilling, looking to try to counter some of those skeleton chariots. They need to be whipping up and around and applying pressure to the Shopti. But of course, when the snakes are here, that is certainly easier said than done. And down the Archmage goes. Oh my god, that was brutal. And she is slumped, feared in style, underneath her horse there. But the Lord Master, however, is going to be leading the charge into battle 
wielding his mighty greatsword, and he shall be able to dish out the damage. He does get a big cleaving strike down on the skeleton chariots, up to 20 kills so far. Hopefully, going to be able to rally the health forces and inspire them to continue fighting despite the loss of their lord. Lovely little hit and run by the Fireborn, doing some pretty big damage to those chariots, as you can see, and falling back just in time to get out of the way of that Ushopti summon. Good micro management there by the High Elf player. And now the White Lions are in the back line. Liber Mortis has gone down to try to buff up these troops. We see another Shem's Burning Gaze attempting to assassinate Arkham there, but he is well and truly quite healthy at the moment. White Lions are a little bit slow on the ground compared to the Ushopti, it seems, so they are struggling to catch up, but applying pressure to them will stop them from shooting, which, of course, is the main thing here. Flameside Phoenix is struggling to get up into the air. The uh, Flaming Pigeon is a desperately looking... I love the little waddle animation. It looks so funny as they kind of try to waddle to freedom there. We do see the Lord Master of Hoeth, unfortunately, get a bit of a taste of his own medicine, being hit by a Spirit Leech, but he might be able to get his own Spirit Leech down on Ark on the Black at some point, which will certainly help him out, but he is now going to be getting gooned by the double characters on horseback, and the fact that he can just whip in and out of combat really is going to mean the Lord Master will suffer here. I mean, in engaged combat, he won't actually be too terrible up against these two characters, but in their horses... Cycle charging him down and just pushing him down into the dirt. He is starting to struggle quite badly and he is fleeing for his life. Despite the fact the leadership of the High Elves is off the field, they're in a relatively solid situation. One you shot great bows is absolutely being handled right now. They still have two gigantic Flamesfire Phoenixes and a bucket ton of infantry, which is really quite comfortably winning the infantry fight. Unfortunately, it seems like the Fireborn have taken a considerable amount of damage. They have managed to break down the enemy chariots, though, so good work to those chaps there. But the long range of T and Stalker Fire is going to be the biggest problem for the High Elves to try to overturn that deficit because the Flames Fire Phoenix is uh, looking very beat up at the moment, down to just 1,000 HP. And the Fireborn retreating now. The Skeleton Chariot is in hot pursuit, but they're crumbling rather quickly. We still have a load of white lines. We have a load of rangers looking to force their way into this main fight to try to finish off the Tomb Kings. And the Flameside Phoenix here is still very healthy. Assassinating Ark on the Black is certainly a good way to do this. Now, Flameside Phoenixes aren't super popular, but in this matchup, I think they certainly have a ton of potential. And that is because of the weakness to fire the majority of the Tomb King Lords do indeed have. Leaper Mortis, though, is going to keep Arkham alive and try to buy time for that Tomb Prince to come in and assassinate the Phoenix. One Skeleton Chariot is still alive, and it is uh, just dra dragging itself around through the infantry, trying to clear them up. The Fireborn, as well as the Flameside Phoenix, are darting down on top of the Stalkers, trying to finish them off. Unfortunately, there is going to be a lot of crossfire coming in with the Ushopti, as well as a Spirit Leech coming down. But, from the ashes, we are reborn. And the Flameside Phoenix, I feel like it's meant to have a more cool animation than that. I zoomed in for it. It kind of just appeared again, like, hey, I'm here. But uh, the Double Phoenix is now very healthy, going after Arkan, who's looking pretty damn weak right now. He is running for his life. Flee, you fool. Flee. And it looks like he does get out of there. And the Stalkers do seem pretty healthy. White Lions have returned to the field. They gave up their pursuit of the Ushopti, which they're now suffering for because they're being shot in the back whilst also trying to deal with some skeleton warriors there. Both the Flames High Phoenixes continuing to try to be assassins that they were born to be and hunt down Ark and the Black, but he is a slippery devil, always hiding amongst his Tomb Princes, and the uh, Tomb Prince is going to be dishing out some pretty good damage there. Likewise, the Stalkers are still alive with a ton of ammunition, though White Lions and Rangers are now pouring through the massive gaping gaps in this battle line, there's basically no front line left whatsoever for the uh, Tomb Kings. Although we do see a lovely, lovely curse come down. That is going to rampage all these troops away from the snakes. That is a really clutch play right there. Coming in by the Tomb Kings. Minus 24 mil attack is also pretty huge. Flame Side Phoenix is really starting to struggle now with the curse upon them. One of them has been beat back. That was the one which did get the rebirth before. The second one, though, still does have potential to get reborn once more. Tomb Prince is really dishing out down. That's some massive damage now, well supported by the Stalkers. Skeleton Chariot seem to have bitten their last bullet, almost just about going down. And the Phoenix, once again, is reborn. I swear it's been a fly up in the sky, really epic. Uh, maybe I'm just imagining that, but it kind of was like, boop, I'm back here. I'm back in the game, I'm back, baby. But it's going to be flying up into the sky and retreating, trying to buy time for the Rangers and White Lions to dish out the damage where possible. Arkan is a very low, the Tomb Prince is very low. Stalker's down to about a third health, but the advantage right now for the Tomb Kings is they kind of have a slight uh, speed advantage. They can kite with their U-Shop to do some good work. And when the High Elves shut down the U-Shop to or at least try to, which is certainly something they have to do here, then they're using their fast-moving Tomb Prince, Ark and the Black, and the Stalkers to really punish the uh, Phoenixes, who 
Currently he's getting hit by a Spirit Leech and obliterated from range by the Stalkers who've done a really good job today. White Lions who are in hot pursuit here of the Ushopti probably want to switch targets right now onto Arkham the Black and try to finish him off. There's still 46 White Lions here and it looks like that's just what they're going to do here to try to drag him down. He's down to just 940 HP. If they get some good swings of their axes, Arkham's going to be in big, big trouble as that fight does continue. You can see more White Lions and Rangers are just chasing down the Ushopti trying to finish them off. Though there's going to be some lovely Skeleton Chariot play just hitting these guys from the flanks. Just going to roll through quite happily slaughter models and try to break them around and you can see the high of morale is really starting to suffer as this Ushopti does start to get shut down but the white lines fall the royal bodyguard of the phoenix king not able to do it Ark and the black much like Sectra, does not serve any petty kings and he uh, rebukes the white lions Coming in with a 22 kills so far, done a decent job, only 550 HP though, he's uh, struggling to cling on to life. As we can see down here, the Flameside Phoenix has been able to catch the Ushopti and pin them in place, buying time for the Rangers and White Lions who have just finished off those chariots to swarm in. And this Ushopti should be a dead unit right now, however the snakes are on approach and these are bucket tons of ammunition, three rounds to fire in to the flanks of this formation or on top of the Flames Fire Phoenix, and it seems like that's kind of what they want to be going for the most part. He shopped to continue to kite once more. They are down relatively low on ammunition. In the distance, White Lions will be shattered and chased off, and this unit of Ushopti still six ammunition, launching shot after shot into the White Lions, perceiving them to be the greater threat. Flames Fire Phoenix continues to hunt down the Ushopti, but they're uh, quite happy just to fall back to the protection of the Stalkers. This has been some really fantastic Team King play, using this unit as a uh, backline kind of protector through the Shopti, and now the range power of the Tomb Kings is really coming to the forefront of the battle. Flameside Phoenix is very, very beat up now, but still has the potential to snipe out Arkan if the Flameside Phoenix can make it through the fire and the flames of the Ushopti shots and the snakes, but it looks like it's not quite going to be enough, and the forces of the Tomb Kings get a very, very Pyrrhic victory. Well played to both um, Cat Tellus and the Black Fawn, representing DVD proudly. I'm assuming this was from a training session. Both of them put on a fantastic game, and that was a very close scrap indeed. If Arkham the Black had been assassinated in the midway point of the battle, it really could have been another story, because he was really able to rally the troops in the late stages, to drop some really nice Libras and Spirit Leeches, but likewise was able to punish the High Elves when they overextended to chase down those Ushopti and... Boy, oh boy, do I hate you, Shopti. I've got waving my fist in the air right now, metaphorically and literally, at those uh, pesky boys. They do so much damage and are such a, a lovely unit for the Tomb Kings to use. We will get into their damage dealt and damage value in just a second of all of the units, in fact. But before we get there, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a big, fat, juicy thumbs up underneath. Subscribe as well for more content into the future. It really helps out the channel and helps you guys see my stuff. And uh, also, feel free to comment down below what you thought of the battle. You can yell quack down below. You can pretty much say whatever you want. Be nice to each other, though, and nice to the players. Otherwise, I will bring out the duck hammer here. Although, to be honest, there wasn't that many mistakes from either player. Just, uh, I think, losing the, the Lord early on was quite a big problem for the Black Fawn. But again, up against the Shopti, it is really hard not to lose your Lords and Casters. If you do want to, um, as well, support the channel in any way, there are links down below to my Patreon, as well as a link down there to my Discord, where you can submit uh, replays to the channel, just like Captellus did here today. And, uh, yeah, they've got a good chance of being cast on the channel. You can get involved in tournaments and events that I host, as well as chill out of a load of cool people and hone your own Warhammer skills. But on to the good stuff, the damage dealt and damage value. 1,910 damage of value on Ark and the Black, performing really well there. 23 kills, but just been a slippery devil. He took up so much time of the High Elves forces, and if they'd been able to kill him, it would have paid off, but because they didn't, uh, it did kind of uh, backfire a little bit, and the Tomb Prince probably got in there and did some really good damage. Actually, nowhere near as much as I thought. Okay, 780 damage value. Not too shabby. Not too shabby, but not too fantastic either. The front line got butchered. It got butchered so well. Now, there was some really nice chariot play. 889 damage value here, 750, 530, and 596, but I do think the Black Fawn actually countered them relatively effectively, particularly in the early game. They couldn't get in there and do too much damage, but when the battle became a bit more stretched, that's when they really started to shine. 
The shop tea, of course, a big pain as always. 1,846 damage value. Only 14 kills, but I mean, they're going after key targets. The southern unit, again, only 18 kills, but it doesn't matter because that damage value is pretty wild. 1,453. Focusing down the Archmage early on and killing her, but also applying pressure to the Fireborn and the Flame Sire Phoenixes up in the sky. For the uh, Mighty Stalkers here, 1,843 damage value and 61 kills. And I think they are one of the main reasons Capitalis managed to win this one. Usually these guys who protect the shop tea is such a common uh, kind of combo now. In fact, this build, for any new Tomb King players out there, this is a really solid build all round. You have your cheap chaff, which is your anvil, your chariots, which is your hammer. You're applying long range pressure with the shop tea, and you have a backline protector in the form of the stalkers. So I would recommend stealing this build and kind of altering it slightly to your own playstyle for new Tomb King players out there. I think this is actually a really solid approach. Now for the forces of the Mighty Black Fall, unfortunately the Archmage of Fire just got decimated early on. Still managed to get 667 damage value and I love the idea of the combination of the Fireball, Spirit Leech, Shem's Burning Gaze. That has got potential to do disgusting damage. Unfortunately, you only got to see that combo once because then the Archmage went down. But if that Shem's Burning Gaze had connected, I think it's a bit better at mid-range. If it's, It seems uh, very much basically like the Hand of the Gods. But uh, some of the shots connected, not all of them. If all of them had connected, Arkham would have been dead. <laughs> he was so weak at that point. So a lovely play there. But unfortunately, yeah, the Archmage going down. The Lore Master, we spoke about, about my boy a little bit uh, at the start of the battle. 880 damage value. I really do think it's the fact that casters can get horsebacks. Um, or be on horseback, sorry, so they can ride to battle on the stallions. That is the reason we see them far more than the Lore Master. Because in the Lore Master, you're also paying for a bit more durability. But also a bit more damage output in combat. But he's got a waddle into combat. He's not very fast or mobile in that essence. Which means he can't bounce around the battlefield to drop spells where he needs to drop them. And that can obviously be a, uh, a big problem when you are a spellcaster. But I do think he's a little underrated. I'd like to see him brought a little bit more. Spirit Leech, Earth Blood, Shem's Burning Gaze. I think he has fast protection off the top of my head. But he has a good toolkit regardless, spell-wise. And this combination is uh, certainly got some legs on it. Rangers, massive kills across the board. Of course, the damage value is not really that great. Um, because it is just up against you know, chaff for the most part. But it's a job you need to do. And they did it really well. 151, 82, 65, 68 kills. They certainly did the lads proud. As for the white lines, they were there to bring the pain a little bit more. Rangers clear the chaff. These guys good against constructs. And should be able to kill the majority of the Tomb King infantry. Just shy of 600 damage value. 976, 867. Solid performance by the white lions. Unfortunately, the Talons didn't manage to uh, capitalize fully there and uh, were a little bit isolated and slaughtered. The Firebomb did really well. 1,662 damage value, over 10k damage dealt. We didn't focus on them too much during the battle, but they did a good job pinning in chariots and uh, dragging them down. The Flamesfire Phoenixes, 1,333 damage value and 693. So not that insane considering that they both got rebirthed and uh, were trying to hunt down Arkham. But he was a slippery devil. I do like this combination though. It is very powerful in this matchup. There's, look at the sniper potential between the two casters with their damage spells and the double flame side phoenix but arkan just about managed to survive massive shout out to captors for keeping him alive and happy so that was uh, the battle hope you guys enjoyed that was a super fun one to cast always love to see these guys sending in replays but until next time peace peace and as always stay awesome